In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. The people that lived in darkness have seen a great light. This is how St. Matthew describes the impact of Jesus' ministry. That light shines on us now as we gather in the Lord's name. Let us reflect for a moment on our need of this precious light. Lord Jesus, you cause the light of faith to shine on us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you cause the light of hope to shine on us. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you cause the light of love to shine on us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, He has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my help. Whom should I A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean, that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went all around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. We hear Jesus in the gospel today saying, repent. Didn't we just hear that in Advent? Didn't we, during the Advent season, preparing for Christmas, maybe go to confession to straighten out our lives? Why do we hear this again now in this third Sunday of ordinary time? Perhaps it's because we continually need to be reminded to turn our lives to the Lord. Jesus is the the light that was spoken of in Isaiah. He is the light that dispels the darkness, and sometimes, though, darkness can overcome the light. Even St. Paul today was addressing the divisions among the Corinthians, and he's, you know, where there's division, there is no light. You know, he said, "There there are to be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. We need to be reminded. Because to be divided, we're pushing the light of Christ out. And so St. Paul warns the Corinthians not to be loyal to individuals, but to be loyal to Christ. He says, you know, some of you are saying, I belong to Paul and some to Apollos, or I belong to this priest or that priest. We all belong to Christ. 
and all those who minister in Christ are Christ for us. So that a rejection of others is a rejection of Christ. A rejection of a priest is a rejection of Christ himself. And so Jesus says to us again then, repent. We're to follow him. And we hear in the gospel today about the disciples who who left everything. You know, Peter and Andrew, they left everything. James and John left everything. They followed Christ. But they too needed to be reminded to repent. Because even though they followed Christ and listened to his words and everything, look at Peter, what happened? He denied even knowing Jesus. He needed to hear those words, repent again. And then James and John, they were even called the sons of thunder because when they were passing through Samaria and they weren't welcoming them, and they said, Lord, let's call down fire from heaven on those people. They too had to be reminded to repent. So you see, Jesus chose these, these simple men. They were fishermen, not scholars. They were laborers, not the religious right. And he chose them because he knew that they had hearts that could be formed. And so he chose, chooses each one of us. And he calls us today to remember that we always need to repent, that we always need to seek the light because Jesus is the light. Together we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The God who calls us will give us all we need to follow faithfully as Jesus' disciples. And so we pray for our needs that all members of the church may leave any nets of confinement and enter the freedom of faithful discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all peoples of the world may hear the good news of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those unjustly bound or imprisoned be freed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may deepen our encounter with the presence of Jesus and minister to others as he did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you hear the prayers of those who call upon you. Grant us our needs and lead us to everlasting life in your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, we thank you for uh, being a part of this ministry and thank all of those who uh, participate in the Catholic Stewardship Appeal that continues to bring this ministry to so many not able to be with us in the churches. And so through your donations to the uh, Catholic Stewardship Appeal and the donations to the diocese, we continue to be very grateful so that we may continue to bless uh, uh, everybody with the presence of Christ through this ministry. The Lord be with you. May our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We'd like to thank you for joining us this morning at uh, Sunday Mass. It's an opportunity for those shut in and those in hospitals and nursing homes to have an opportunity uh, to share in the celebration of Sunday, the Sunday Mass. Due to your generosity in the CSA and also your individual gifts that you constantly send us, this Mass is possible. And we ask that you continue to be generous because through your goodness, we are able to reach out to many and give them the presence and the peace of Christ and the glory of his praise and thanksgiving to his Father. We thank you very much. God bless you all and have a good day.